So I got to start a new recording here. All right, so for your guys' classwork, let's look at your classwork. This should be much better. Okay, so sorry, that was assignment seven. So assignment six is what you were supposed to turn in. So classwork, good, like, like 28 of 30 you turn in. That's wonderful, you guys are awesome. And um, whoa, the homework's not looking good though. 18 people have turned in. I, I thought I graded your guys' I graded 13 of them ready and I returned those, but five more people turned it in within the last 20 minutes. So I'll have to go back and grade those. 14 people haven't turned in their homework yet. So no bueno for that. But um, I posted the last video from class. So you can watch that if you want to. Like and subscribe, don't forget to do that. Uh, number seven is so this is today's work okay and hopefully you got my message i sent it out earlier about an hour ago if you didn't if you could run and print this up this is what we're going to be doing our notes today that you're going to submit if you don't have a printer at least graph paper would be helpful because you see we're going to be doing a lot of graphing today if you've got your colored pencils out to add fancy colors i loved seeing colors on um, some homework assignments i uh, several people use colors and it just makes it easier to see more beautiful and uh, prettier to look at. So um, that's always a bonus if you use color, okay? So uh, so yeah, we're gonna be doing these six graphs today and discussing what the solutions are when you have different these six different situations. These are the, the graphic organizers for chapter three. So we're going to use these graphic organizers here and complete them. That's gonna be the classwork for today, assignment seven. All right, the homework, um, there were a lot of homework problems for the last section, so we split it up in half. So you're gonna do the second half. So today's, there's not that much, 74 through 78 and 81 through 83, make sure you skip 76. Okay, and that is due Friday at 10 a.m. You will have an assignment tomorrow. I think it's, I think it, I know what it's gonna be. So allow for some time to do some work tomorrow, okay? It's gonna take more than just 10, 15 minutes for tomorrow's assignment. Um, it'll help you with Friday's assignment. Cause like I said, Friday's assignment is gonna be uh, kind of a doozy. It's gonna be hard. I mean, this is gonna be harder. So I'm gonna give you an assignment on Wednesday to help you prepare for the Friday assignment, okay? So make sure you do that Wednesday assignment. You will have a easier time if you do the Wednesday assignment to prepare you for Friday, all right? So make sure you do the Wednesday assignment. I'll send some kind of check-in for to take role, but there will be assignment too, um, unless I just make the assignment due tomorrow, which I might do that. All right, let's do, um, let's start the notes. So if you have that printed up or if not, this is what it looks like. I'm going to do mine on a different app today. So this is number one here. Okay. And I kind of have it filled in. I'm just going to, you guys are going to copy it down, take notes. I'm going to explain my notes. So number one here. Okay. Says, what if we have an equation with one variable and let's put the title on the top. I think there's room on the top to put like 3.2.1. It might say, does it say graphic organizer at the top? Because I had to cut mine off. Um, hopefully it does. If it's not, if it doesn't, you can write graphic organizer up there. Graphic organizer. Okay, and this is just like a summary of like how to solve some of these problems. So x plus two squared plus y squared, what is it, the um, solution gonna look like if we have an equation with one variable? Okay, so there's really, this is like two equations, right? Like this is an equation and then this is its own separate equation, but there, notice there's no y value in here, right? So it means we're only gonna be able to solve for x. At first I thought we were, you know, at first I thought we we're gonna have two solutions, like an X and a Y, but there is no Y in here. So our solution is just an X. So first of all, let's graph this. So to graph the left-hand side, we're gonna do, we're gonna put like a Y equals, right? You can write this down, Y equals X squared, X plus two squared. Then to graph this, since it's already in graphing form, you know, our HK, our um, center is gonna be at negative two, zero because, this is your H value. This is the negative H value, opposite of your H value right there. So negative two, zero, there is no K, right? Cause it's plus like zero. There's nothing added to the end over here. So negative two, zero is our point. So if we go to negative two here, we put a, a, um, a point there. 
I already have my point, you're gonna graph this. And then you go up one over one to get your next point, over one, up one to get your next point, over one, up three is your next point. And then from here, over one, up three. And since it's an, it's an equals, we're gonna go ahead and make a solid graph, right? Solid line going through here. Solid line, you're graphing this on your paper. Hopefully you at least have graph paper. If not, you have this printed out. So that's the first, the left-hand side of the equation. So now we need to graph the right-hand side of the equation. So we do y equals x plus four, All right? That's the right-hand side of the equation. So this is just a line. We're gonna start it at four and the slope is one. So we're gonna start at four. And then we're gonna go up one over one. Instead of going up one over one, I reversed and I went back one, left one, back one, down one, back one, down one, because I wanted to find the intersection, the two intersection points of the parabola and the line. Okay, and then uh, go ahead and put an arrow at the end. So I see that they intersect at zero four, right? So. I write down the coordinate, we write down the coordinate in zero, four. I also see that they intersect at negative three, one, right? But should my answer, if I solve this algebraically, is my answer going to be a coordinate, an X and a Y, or is it just gonna be an X if I solve this algebraically? It's just gonna be um, an X, right? There is no Y. So our solution is just your X coordinates. These are your solutions, X equals negative three and X equals zero, right? So X, we can do it graphically. We can do this algebraically. I could solve that algebraically. I could go, if I could square this out, I'd get X squared plus four X plus four equals X plus four. This is how I solve it algebraically. And then I would bring these X's over to the other side. So I'd minus X, minus four, and I'd minus X and I'd minus four. Is that good guys? And then I'd get X squared uh, plus three X, and then the fours would cancel out uh, equals zero. Okay, here's a good one. How do you solve this if it's just like this? Well, these both have an X, so I can factor out an X and I could have um, X plus three like that equals zero. And then, so these are your two factors. So you take the first factor, the X, you set it equal to zero, that's your first answer. And then you take the second factor, the X plus three and set it equal to zero. And so we get X equals negative three. So we just solve this algebraically without the graph, right? And we got the same thing that we did when we did the graph. If you do it algebraically, it takes like three steps. We multiply this out to get this, multiply it, make sure you square this correctly. Notice I got a trinomial, not a binomial. I didn't just square that and square that because that's not how you square it. I have to multiply it all out and then get it equal to zero. I get zero, negative three, or I could use the graph and see where they intersect and get negative three, zero. But notice I'm not saying that the solution is negative three, one. That is not the solution for this. It's just X equals negative three. And for this one, the solution is X equals zero, not zero, four, because there's no Y in this situation. So we can't introduce a Y variable, okay? So that is number one. I'm gonna scroll down to number two here. Okay, so your paper is blank, right? So we're, you're gonna write this in. What about an equation with two variables? So now we have an X and we have a Y. So that means we're gonna have, our solutions are gonna have an X and a Y in it, right? We're gonna have an X and a Y solutions. Okay, um, but this is just an equation. So we're just gonna graph it. And this is the same problem that we graphed up here. So the HK is negative two zero, right? This is your H um, negative two, and then there's no K. So it's like plus zero. So we're gonna start at negative two zero, put a dot there, go over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up three, and we can go over one, up five for your next point up here too. And then over one, up three from here, over one, up five, which will bring me right there. And then go ahead and grab your graph your parabola. Okay, so um, I put some points on here. Uh, negative two zero is an important point. 
negative four, four is, is just a point and zero four happens to be right across from it. So what are the solutions to this type of equation? How many solutions does this equation have? Well, it has infinitely many infinite. solutions, right? Sorry. Infinite. Right, infinite solutions. Every point on the parabola is a solution. So there's three solutions here, but there's four, five, six, seven. There's another one right here. There's another one right here. There's another one right here. There's one up here. There's one up here. It goes on forever. So you're going to write down there are infinitely many solutions, but you don't just want to say like that just means like, oh, everything's a solution. No every point on the line is a solution. So we're gonna write that down. Every point on the line is a solution. Here's some points, we're gonna name some points. Negative four, four, let's write that, that's a solution. Negative three, one, negative three, one is right here. That's a solution. Negative two, zero, that's the vertex, that's a solution. Uh, negative one, one, that is a solution. Negative one, one is this point right here, right, and et cetera. So any point on the parabola, so we're just gonna write down a few to name a few to show that we know, yeah, the points on the parabola are a solution. Okay. Give you a second to finish copying that down before I scroll up here. I'm gonna scroll up, you can still see that part a little bit. So the third one on the first page of this, um, of this graphic organizer, now we have two equations, right? One is a parabola, because it's got a squared, and one is a line, because it doesn't have a squared, and has an X and a Y. So this is the exact same one that we graphed last time. And so we're going to start at negative two, zero here at negative two, zero. We're going to put the vertex. We're going to go up one over one, up one over one, up one, up three over one, up three over one over here, over one up five, over one up five to all the way up at nine, right? Please label your axes too. I put nine on there. I put zero, four on there. I put negative two, zero on there. I put negative five on there just so we have some numbers. You should always have some reference numbers on your axes. Your axes should not be blank. It shouldn't be a graph with no numbers, okay? Now let's graph this line. I don't like how it's written, so I'm gonna rearrange it. I'm gonna put y equals negative x plus four. I'm gonna switch these around, right? Negative x plus four. So that tells me I need to start at four right here. And then I need to, the slope is negative one. So this is a different line. So we're gonna go down one over one. Oops, sorry, down one over one this way. It's negative, so my line should be falling. And, or I could go over one, up one, over one, up one. I went this way because I wanted to find where they intersect and I could see they intersect at negative five, nine. So that's why I wrote that there and you can write it down as well. So how many solutions does this system basically have? It has two, right? It has two, it has the solutions because there's an X and a Y. So the two solutions, the solutions are the two points where they intersect, which are negative five, nine and zero, four. So, um, so this point right here and that point right there are the solutions where they intersect. So negative five, nine, zero, positive four are the solutions. How can we tell there's gonna be two solutions? Cause there's an X and a Y, there's an X and a Y. This one also has an X and a Y. So there's gonna be an X, Y solution. If there's just X's, it's only gonna be an X solution, right? Um, there's no inequalities in this. So we just have two points. All right, so I'll give you a second to copy that down cause I gotta move on to the next page. And I need to, um, Stop this. Yeah. So what's Those are okay, so this is page two. Again, you don't have this stuff written on your paper. I do, let's see. You're gonna write it on your paper. Your paper is blank. 
Sorry, try to get it the right size here. I need it to go to the left. Okay, so the first inequality here says x plus two squared is greater than, so this is the first time we have an inequality is greater than x plus four, right? There's only x's, there's no y's in these, right? I added some y's just to show you what we're gonna graph, right? Like I put y equals this over here and y equals this over here. So we have, essentially we have two equations in one and they're being put together. So we're gonna have two graphs when we graph this, right? So this is just gonna be the graph that we just, same parabola, y equals x squared, x plus two squared, but since it's greater than, we're gonna make it a dotted. So we're gonna start at negative two zero, right? So just do the parabola first, start at negative two zero, go up one over one, up one over one right here, go up one over one, up three over one, up three over one, up here, over one, up five, Five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine is actually up here. So it's actually right there, not there. And this one should be right there. That should be eight. That should be nine. Okay. And make a dotted line. So we've got our parabola first. Then we got to graph our line y equals x plus four. And we're going to make that one dotted too, since it's just greater than. Okay. So we're going to start at four here. Here's four. And then the slope is one. So I'm going to go up one over one, but I'm going to go backwards down one, left one, down one, left one, down one, left one, so that I get this line right here and make my dotted line. So you're drawing this in, you're making your dotted line. Okay. There are various regions that we could um, graph. We could graph, like we could graph this region, we could graph this region, we could graph the region in between the two, or we can graph this region up here, okay? So, or even over here. So there's like six or seven regions that we should shade in, we could shade in. So we need to figure out, but we're not doing regions because we just have an X. There's no Y in this problem, right? I just added that, but there's only X. So our, our, our solution is gonna be an inequality on a number line, right? We're gonna say, hey, the solutions are between here and here and here and here. How am I gonna find this solution though? So basically we just have to plug in numbers. We have to plug in numbers. I need to make this a little smaller, not too small. Okay, so I'm gonna check points from like, let me, I started with zero, zero. Okay, but then I realized I don't need the Y zero. I just need X equals zero. So if I plug in zero into this, Okay, if I plug in zero, I'm gonna get this and you should write this down. We're gonna check points zero, zero, but really we don't need this zero. We're checking X equals zero. When I plug in zero here and zero here, I get two squared is greater than four, right? And I get four equals four. That's not true because there's no equal to sign, but notice how they're equal. That's important because that means that's a boundary point. When it's equal like this, that's a boundary point. So I'm gonna end up putting an open circle at zero because it didn't work, but because they're equal, that's where your boundary point is, okay? Now I gotta check the points in between and I need to check the points to the right of zero and to the, and to the left of zero, okay? So next I decided to check negative two, one because, and I just picked this point because like I started here, I said, oh, zero, zero would be easy to pick. And then one would be easy. one, one, uh, negative two, one is inside the two. So let me pick that one. So I picked negative two. So let's check negative two, one in there. I really don't need this one. I just need to check X equals negative two. So when I put negative two in here, negative two plus two, that gives me zero. So that's zero is greater than, and then when we do negative two plus four, right? Negative two plus four, that gives me two. So zero is greater than two. Zero is not greater than two. So that means no, negative two is not a solution. So this, anything, anything in the negative two region is not a solution. So anything from zero to negative two is not gonna work, right? Because I checked this area. Now let's check I should check negative three first. I put negative four, we'll go to negative four. So let's check negative three. I'm going in order, right? I'm going to the left. 
I'm gonna check negative three. Why? Because negative one, because that's where the two lines intersect, right? That's why I'm checking negative three, because they intersect at negative three, one. So I'm just gonna put negative three in here. And when I put negative three in here, let me put it a darker color. When I put negative three, I can't, negative three plus two is negative one squared, which would give me positive one. And then when I put negative three plus four, that gives me one. So no, one is not greater than one, but it's equal to. So that tells me this is a boundary point, right? This is a boundary. If you get equal, that is your boundary. So I'm gonna put at negative three, I'm gonna put an open circle there, okay? Because when you find them equal to each other, those are your boundaries. So that means I need to check to the left of negative four because I checked in between here, it didn't work. I checked this one, it, it didn't work, but we got a boundary point, I checked this one. So now I need to check the next one to the left of this. I need to check negative four. So I'm gonna plug in negative four next, okay? So let's plug in negative four into this. So let me get my eraser and erase this stuff. Whoa, I did not want to erase all that. So maybe not, I'll just use a darker color. So if I put negative four in here, oh no, I didn't get rid of my eraser. There we go, let's try that. Okay, if I put negative four in here, put negative four plus two, that's negative two squared, which would give me positive four is greater than, and then when I put negative four in here, negative four plus four is zero. So I get four is greater than zero. Yes, it finally works. We finally got one that worked, right? Negative four, four is greater than zero. So negative four is a solution. So that tells me I need to shade my line to the left because it worked. That tells me never, negative five is gonna work, negative six is gonna work. If you want, you can test them, but I already tested one point to the left of the boundary point. So every other point to the left should work too. Okay, now we need a point, we, we need to check a point to the right of zero. So I need to check one, I could check two, I could check three, I can check any point to the right I want to. So let's just check one. So I'm gonna test X equals one. Right, so I'm gonna put one in here. One plus two is three, three squared is nine, it is greater than one plus four is five. That works, yes, right? So that tells me I should shade to the right of the zero because I tested a point to the right. I tested the point in between, didn't work. I tested the actual points, that's how I got my boundaries. And we tested to the left and right of the boundary points to find our shading. So that tells me the solution, how do we write this? X is, oh, we have to write two, so because this is an or, or is more, remember? X is greater than, no, sorry, that's less than. X is less than negative three, or X is greater than zero, right? For the left-hand part, X is less than going to the left, it's going to the left, x is less than negative three, and then the part going to the right is x is greater than zero. You put an or in between, because or is more when they go away from each other, you gotta have that or in there. It's, it's a compound inequality. So this one is gonna have a compound inequality. All the x's to the left of negative three and to the right of zero are solutions. In our graphing, um, when I tested this, well, it's just gonna look like this. It's gonna go from here to here. So anything from this point on is a solution and zero, this point on is a solution. Okay, anything there. So we should put lines, like where's negative three, negative one, negative two. Negative. So if you want, you could put lines. Remember we did that in Desmos where we put the lines like that. And so all the points over here are solutions. So actually this should be shaded in two, like that. And then all the points from zero. So I put a line at the um, at the y-axis, and everything to the right of that should be shaded. So anything over here is a solution, and anything over here is a solution. The other stuff in between is not. I would erase this stuff, right? So there's a line, there's a line here and here, a vertical line, and all those solutions are to the left of that and to the right of that. Okay to move up my paper. Okay, this is uh, problem number five, right? On your, on your graphic organizer. 
an inequality with two variables. So um, let me see if I could erase this. This is not part of the problem. So, so the problem was negative two y is greater than x plus 14. That's on your paper. We want to solve this algebraically by dividing by negative two. Okay, so I can divide this, the left side by negative two, the right side by negative two. Remember when you divide an inequality by a negative, you need to switch the inequality, you need to flip it the other way. So I flipped it from greater than to less than because when you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, you have to switch the inequality. And then when I divide this, I get negative one half X and then 14 divided by negative two is minus seven. So this is our inequality, it's in slope intercept form so we can graph it now. So we go down to negative seven, number your lines, please. Negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight, negative seven's right in the middle. Then we go down one over two. If I go down one over two, it puts me right here, but I'm gonna reverse and go up one over two, up one over two, just to get a better graph over here. Then we're gonna do a dotted line here, right? And we're either gonna shade above or the below the line. Well, since my inequality ended at a being less than, I'm going to shade below the line. If it had remained a greater, it started out greater, but we had to change it. We had to flip it when we solve for y. So this is, so it means any point down here is a solution. Could we test a point? Sure. I could test zero, zero. If I wanted to, I could test a point that is in, in either part of the region. Zero, zero is the easiest point to test. So if I plug in zero over here into the original equation, Negative two times zero is zero. And then I get zero plus 14. Zero is greater than four. It's not greater than 14. That's why this region is not shaded because that point is in that region and it didn't work for us. So instead we shade down here, down here. Okay, we shade down there because uh, you shade the opposite side of the point that doesn't work. It didn't work up here. This point is up here and it didn't work. So we shade the other side. Okay, if I test another point down here, it will work. If I test like negative three, negative eight, which is right there, it, it'll work. It'll, I've got a true solution. Okay, so our solution is any point in the shaded region. For instance, IE, for instance, zero negative eight is down here in the shaded region negative six, negative seven, which is negative six, negative seven is down here. That's in the shaded region. So dot, 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 there's more points. Those are just two of the solutions, but there are many, right? Because this half plane, this is a half plane that goes on forever in this direction, right? It goes on forever, like way down here, goes on forever, goes on forever. So this is called a half plane. So your answer is a half plane. It's all the points in the half plane. Okay. okay, lastly, last one, guys. Pretty easy lesson, but this is going to help you understand the solutions, kind of help you understand the last uh, lesson that we did. Okay, let's test zeros. Um, here's our problem. Y is greater than X plus 2 squared, and Y is less than or equal to 4 minus X. This is a quadratic, it's a parabola, and this is a linear. Right, this has got an X squared, this one doesn't. So let's graph these. There's an X and a Y, so our solution is gonna have um, X and Y's in them. So let's go to negative two zero because we know negative two zero is the HK, right? So um, negative two zero, because this is the same parabola we've been using the whole day. So negative two zero is right here. We're gonna go over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up three, over one, up three to zero four over one up five to one nine, and then over one five up here to negative four nine, I think it is. And this is negative three one, because we did it earlier. Uh, oh, it's ne sorry, it's negative five nine, five nine. Okay, is that point right there. We're gonna put dotted lines because there's no, equal to sign underneath. So we're gonna make a dotted line for this parabola. We gotta decide, are we gonna shade inside the parabola or outside the parabola? We'll test a point, test zero, zero. See this blue thing? Zero, zero is the easiest point to test. So I'm gonna test zero, zero. 
when I put zero in here, I get zero is greater than zero plus two squared, which is two squared. Zero is greater than four. No, zero is not greater than four. So the point I tested is outside the parabola, right? That point I tested was outside the parabola. So that means it didn't work. So I need to shade inside the parabola. So that's why I'm shading inside the parabola here. Now we need to do the line. So I don't like how this is written, so I'm going to reverse it. Y is less than or equal to negative X plus four. All I did was switch these two around, so I don't need to switch inequalities or anything like that. So we're going to start at four. Four is up here. I did this one in green using different colors. Then we go down one over one because the slope is negative one. So I go down one over one, down one over one, and it intersects at negative three one right there is the intersection, right? It intersects at negative three one and zero four. Okay, this one's gonna be a solid line. So I make a solid line because it's got the equal to sign underneath, right? Less than or equal to. Since it's less than, that means I'm gonna shade below the line. I don't have to test a point unless I want to. I could test zero, zero, and it should work. If I test zero, zero on this one, I'm just gonna do it just because we're here and we could do it. I test zero, zero, and here I get zero is less than or equal to four. Yes, it is. So the point I tested is below the line. So that means I'm gonna shade below the line. If it didn't work, I would shade above the line, okay? So we have that work there. Okay, um, what are your solutions? The small shaded region is the solution for this one. The, sh the solution is where the blue, the blue shading and the green shading overlap. Where do they overlap? the very small region. You need to identify this, okay? Don't just assume I know this when you're doing a test or a quiz. You need to write, hey, I know where the solution is. The solution is any point in the shaded region, right? So you need to write that down. Don't just assume that I know you know that, okay? So the small shaded region is the solution. So any point in here, like negative one, negative two, is that Negative one, negative two, one is a solution, for instance. Negative two, one is in this region. Okay, it's a very small region, but there are a bunch of points in there. So any point in that region is a solution. All right, guys. Um, oh, I did put a number line. This is, we don't really need this, but it's a very narrow. It goes from where the two intersect. You don't need this because there's an X and a Y. If this was just X, then I would use this, right? But the solutions go from like negative three to zero. You can see they go from negative three to zero because that's where the shaded region is. You don't need this, but it's a good like example of where your solutions are. All right, guys, so that is the lesson for today. You're gonna submit a picture of this in the Google Classroom for today's classwork. So you show me that you followed along, you took notes, you're going to submit the two pictures of the or a scan of the two pages that we just took notes on, then you're going to do the homework assignment. Um, you're going to do the homework assignment that we just assigned from the book 74 through 83 ish skip 76 and 79 and 80. Okay, so that's your homework, make sure to submit your classwork right here. I will post assignment tomorrow, Wednesday, and uh, we'll Zoom again for a difficult lesson on Friday. And you're done pretty early today, so go work on some math. Stay dry, stay safe. It's supposed to be a big storm tonight. Don't go out tonight, okay? Stay safe. Don't be running around town if you don't need to, um, and uh, be safe out there. All right?